This is Sports Rage. I am Rancy. Listen, it's the calm before the storm. We're all in football mode uh, right now, but there's games going on. And our boy Tommy is a, a Sacramento King fan, and he knows this. I know this. The Kings are the most erratic, effing crazy team in the NBA, man. Like this team, like they could be up, like they could be up by 34 points and blow a lead. Like you cannot, like you can't. Uh, Phoenix went on a 30 to 8 run to end the basketball game. Like you can't, like I, I had Phoenix tonight. And I never really gave up on it because I'm like, wow, well, why do I give up on this? Sacramento blow leads like all the time. And that's what happened uh, here this evening. 119, 117, final score. Uh, Phoenix beats the Sacramento Kings. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, to break down here this evening. Rick Saratella is going to hop up and in. There were a couple of things I wanted to rage about, actually. Um, one of them was, and I did this on Twitter yesterday, uh, but I saw, and I got a lot of tweets about this. Um, I don't know what's going on here, if, like, Kurtz is still on in our background shuffling or stuff. Can you kill this, Tommy? I've got some sort of sound here uh, going on. Thank you. Yeah, it was Kurtz. What was he doing? <laughs> he's a menace. He's a menace to society, this guy. Like what his sounds, bro. <laughs> his clicks. He's he's the only one on the network with a mouse. Do you use a mouse, Tommy? Like you use a mouse, like click, click. You hear him clicking away. Click, 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 click. <laughs> it drives me crazy. But I don't know if people I don't know if people can hear it, but in my headset, like I can hear Kurtz clicking away shuffling around moving around i'm like what the hell is that sound and i just knew i'm like i know this is kurtz so all right we're gonna welcome the serious crowd here hey hey everybody uh this is sports rage i am around let's do this thing uh we're going into level three rick saratella is gonna hop up and in we got a lot of football uh to get to uh but speaking of football actually and uh speaking of serious um we're playing clips from the shows that go on during the day sort of a carryover and stuff and uh, a lot of talk about Kalen DeBoer and all this college football stuff is crazy, man. Jed Fish, we'll get into Jed Fish, the new head coach at Washington, with our boy Rick Saratella. But uh, here's uh, Mike DeCourcy and Carver on uh, on Coast to Coast uh, today on Kalen DeBoer. I think he's a terrific football coach, but I don't think he's ever lived a, an experience quite like this. And it'll be very interesting to see how he how he enjoys coaching at Alabama where everything is dissected. Every last move you make, who you bring in, who you don't recruit, who you do recruit, how you play them. That it's, it's a different level in terms, not in terms of the competition, but in terms of the expectation and the attention. And he, he started out, he was a, he was a small college guy, NAIA university of Sioux Falls. And he was uh, phenomenal there. And then he went into relatively low profile FBS circumstances uh, where he was an offensive coordinator and that sort of thing, uh, an offensive coach or coordinator for a series of programs. I mean, his move to the big time was in Indiana, which if you were the IU basketball coach, boy, the spotlight's on. But if, as a football coach, they're just hoping you win more games than you lose. So he's never really had this level of scrutiny. And the reality is that between Bear Bryant and Nick Saban, and with the, the very short rise to success of Gene Stallings, there, were, there was a lot of disaster in Alabama. I mean, this is not a no-brainer job. It, it, it is very easy to mess it up. They had, I believe, six coaches, five coaches in between uh, the Bear and Nick. Yep. And and. All of them either struggled or failed, with the exception of Stallings, who won the 1992 national championship, but wasn't really desiring to stay there long because, again, that that spotlight is really hot. Interesting conversation and a lot of valid points, but I'll tell you what. I think they got it right with Kalen DeBoer. Number one, who are you going to hire? Um like, you, you could have gone for a bigger name, old Lane Kiffin, this, Dabo Sweeney, that. How many championship games have has Lane Kiffin been in, right? Yeah, Dabo Sweeney does a great job. It used to feel like it was going to be a good fit at Bama, but I'm going to give Alabama the benefit of the doubt as far as if you look at the track record of their, of their hires, look at the basketball hire. We talked about this with Brent Beard last week. Look at the basketball hire in Nate Oates. 
right? Nate Oates kind of is a jerk, let's be real, right? He says a lot of stupid things and stuff, but he's a great coach. And you can't argue with the success that he has. And he came from the Buffalo Bulls, right? So, like, going from the Buffalo Bulls to the SEC in basketball is a big-time jump. And look how successful that he's been. I think the Boar is a good fit. I think that he'll do well uh, with uh, with Alabama. But I think I don't think it's so much the coaching. And I think this is something Nick Saban, too, is tired of. It's sort of like the old guys that have been around, they don't like this new modern era. And I don't, I'm not saying to Nick Saban, you know, he doesn't like the kids getting paid, but it's a pain, it's, it's a pain to deal with, right? Like all this NIL stuff. And quite frankly, we've talked about it. Alabama aren't as rich as other schools are. So they're going to fall behind a bit. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else uh, in between. Shout out to everyone joining us for level three right now, including the 50,000 watt juggernaut, the Mightier 1090 ESPN radio in the house. Let's do this thing. There's a lot of stuff uh, going on. The Clippers looking for another win right now. They're up on Oklahoma City Thunder. The Sacramento Kings um, had a massive lead tonight. They got outscored 30 to 8 to end the basketball game. The Phoenix Suns uh, won. Uh, But, of course, it's countdown to kick off the National Football League uh, playoffs. This stuff has been lit. The television numbers are, like, just absolutely crazy. That Rams-Lions game, man, was viewed by about 40 million people at one point in time. It was, like, the most viewed game ever besides, like, a Super Bowl. Like, they broke records uh, the other night, and we're just getting started uh, right now. Uh, But let's start off with the big news uh, of the day. Uh, Let's start off with the coaching uh, carousel stuff. There was a lot of talk about Coach uh, Harbaugh meeting with the Los Angeles Chargers. Reports were that the uh, meeting uh, went well. Harbaugh liked what he heard, and I think it is true, as uh, Mike Lombardi stated, that Harbaugh is interviewing teams. Teams aren't interviewing him, right? Harbaugh's the one calling the shots. There are multiple teams looking for coaches. He's got Michigan in his back pocket, so it's not like uh, he's, you know, looking for a job, uh, per se, and will accept any NFL coaching uh, position just because it's there. He's in a position of power. So the Charger situation seems like a good one. The Atlanta Falcons, the latest interview, Harbaugh. All these interviews, this stuff happens. It's happened in the past. But you got to believe that it's it's about to come to fruition. I've noticed, like, all the Michigan Wolverine players, most of them, like, a lot of them have obviously uh, declared their eligibility for the National Football League draft. But the players that are coming back, and there's been a few of them that have announced, like Donovan Edwards, a big-time player, he's coming back. It's not Harbaugh that's retweeting it. It's Sharon Moore. Sharon Moore is the one saying, let's get after it next year. Yeah, let's run it back. I think it's pretty clear Sharon Moore is going to be the coach, and Harbaugh is going to the NFL. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but he's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. San Francisco minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. What the hell's the difference between the 6 and the 7 seed? I need my guys out here to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> A lot of fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on 
basically anything that requires a vote. So you're talking about an MVP award, uh, a Cy Young, a Rookie of the Year, anything where somebody, where people at the end of the year have to vote. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, there's, so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. This is Sports Rage. I am around. See the pips and players, the hustlers, the people of Boston, and everybody else in between. Rick Saratella is going to step up and in in a couple of minutes. Uh, I was just talking about the uh, the Jim Harbaugh uh, situation. And listen, I'm not going to pretend to know. Nobody really knows anything about Harbaugh. And every time you think you know what Harbaugh is going to do, the guy's like a Rubik's Cube, right? Like, it's always changing and it's evolving. Because while he's meeting with NFL teams, he's also negotiating a contract with Michigan. That's been taken forever, but there's been a lot of reports uh, today, specifically, uh, you know, whatever, last night, today, the last 24 hours, but about Harbaugh wants to put in the contract with Michigan that no matter what happens with the NCAA next year, that he gets paid, he doesn't get punished, you know, financially, and that they cover everything financially. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? He wants full protection, insurance, and liability about this, which I understand, which I don't think it's it's unreasonable. But at the same point in time, we all know he wants to go to the NFL, right? So, you know, I see some Michigan fans are turning on the athletic director and the president. What the hell do you want them to do? They're offering them, like, you know what I mean? I don't know. The last we heard was $15 million plus incentives. It's probably there. It's probably going to end up offering him twenty million dollars a year to stay at Michigan. If he wants to go to the NFL, I don't. I don't think any clause in a contract is going to be what. But as I stated earlier, and Mike Lombardi was on with Pat McAfee, and he said, he said Harbaugh is the one basically interviewing, right? He doesn't need you. You need him. So he's just you know he's listening to these teams and hearing what their plan is. What do they think? Or am I am I on the same page with this owner? Do I like them? Do I like the quarterback? Do I like this and that? And I know everybody thinks the Chargers is some dream job, but is it? Like, really? If you look at the Chargers roster, it's extremely flawed. It's not very young, right? The Chargers have a lot of veterans. They've got guys that are sort of past their prime. They're good players, right? Mike Williams is good. He's always hurt. Keenan Allen's good. He's always hurt. Justin Herbert's good. You know, he's never really proven anything. He doesn't really win games. Not his fault, but at the same point in time, you know, some of it is. Um, Austin Ackler's really good, but he's, you know, he's not young and up and coming, right? Like, look at the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers, youngest team in the NFL. And, you know, they're growing, right? They're building something. So, you know, the Spanos family aren't exactly the best owners. Even if they, let's say, they came up with the money with Harbaugh, for Harbaugh, which would surprise me, but if they did say, all right, we're going to pay him $20 million a year or whatnot, whatever, 
you know, they want to spend money on players. But what I'm saying is, too, like just from a flexibility standpoint, from a football standpoint, it's hard to mold the Chargers. They kind of are what they are. And they're not as good as people think they are. You can blame blame Brandon Staley. You can blame McCoy. You can blame Marty Schottenheim. You can blame all the coaches like everybody has in their history. They're a flawed roster, all right? They're not a Super Bowl. Like, it's not a Super Bowl. It's not a team that's knocking on the door of the Super Bowl, the Chargers. They need a lot of things, this team, right? So, and and the Rams are, you're, sec- you're not, anybody that knows the L.A. market, like, go go to a sports store in L.A., all right, go go to it like when you're in LAX, okay? You know when you're in an, an airport of the city, those had like the local teams and stuff. Have has anybody? And we have a lot of people listening in LA right now. What's up? Has anybody ever seen an F in Chargers hat, shirt, mug, magnet, or anything at LAX? <laughs> have you do you see Charger jerseys in local sports stores? No, I hell, I was just in one. I was just in a bunch of sports stores in Hollywood and LA and stuff, you know, just like a week and a half. All right. It's all Dodgers and Lakers, man. All right. Like just point blank. All right. Dodgers, Lakers. There ain't nothing about like, you wouldn't even know the Chargers exist. You wouldn't know the Chargers play there. So, you know, you're, the, it's, the Rams are popular, but you know, even that, the Raiders are just as big, even though they're not there. But you know what I'm saying? So, the Chargers isn't some dream job, I don't think. So where I'm going with this is the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons uh, announced on Tuesday that they completed an interview uh, with Jim Harbaugh a day after sitting down with Bill Belichick. They're big game. Uh, they're going after big games, uh, big game hunting here. Arthur Blank, he ain't playing around. And I, you know, and I don't think they should play around. Like about Jerry Jones, I'm Arthur Blank. I'm not getting any younger. I've already done everything. I'm rich. I want to win. Just pay the guy, right? So where I'm going with this is, what job would you want if you were Harbaugh? Would you rather coach the Los Angeles Chargers or the Atlanta Falcons? And I'll tell you what, the Atlanta Falcons are everything the Chargers are not. You got you got a young guy in his second year with B. John Robinson, man. Guy, and he didn't even get much mileage this year. Like, they didn't use him properly, right? You've got Pitts. You've got Drake London. You've got a bunch of really good young players on defense. Your offensive line doesn't suck. You know, listen, they've got, they've got some holes, but the Atlanta Falcons are a football team that you look at their young roster, like if you're Harbaugh, it's like, all right, I got a superstar young running back. I got a bunch of stud wide receivers. All I'm missing is a quarterback. And, oh, yeah, we have the eighth pick in the draft. I could take J.J. McCarthy, and it would just be perfect fit. Boom, there's the eighth pick. And or and or whatnot, you know what I mean? A, a trade, is it somebody else? What? I Me personally... I think the Atlanta Falcon job is a better one than the Chargers. Not to mention the division that you play in, right? It's like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's not stupid, right? Tom Brady left the Patriots. He went to a division where Drew Brees was old and retiring and everybody else sucked it. So, like, if you're Harbaugh, all right, you take the Charger job. Okay, I got to deal with the Broncos who have a ton of money and they're, they, you know, they're going to build up. Over the next couple of years, Mahomes is still around for the next while. Um, like, what, what? It's a battle, and oh yeah, and by the way, I'm in the AFC. I got to play my brother and his good team, the Ravens. I got to play the Bills, the Bengals. The AFC is like way, way, way tougher than the NFC is, right? The NFC is a joke. There's the San Francisco 49ers and everybody else in that conference, right? So, if you're Harbaugh, you go to Atlanta. Who are you competing with? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who just won a division, and they're they're a mediocre football team. The Saints suck. The Carolina Panthers are a joke. Like, if you're Harbaugh, like, you could literally win a division in the first year. Right away. Boom, I'm in the playoffs. Just like that. You go to the Chargers, you're not making the playoffs. Just because you're Harbaugh. There's no magic wand he has. He needs players to win. He doesn't have a magic wand. The Falcons have players. Like, to me... So, and I, and listen, I don't know. We'll see about the Raiders, right? There's, you know, it seems like it's a natural fit. Harbaugh's wife is from Vegas. 
uh, Tom Brady's a minority owner. Uh, Harbaugh actually got his coaching start in the NFL many, many years ago with the Raiders. Al Davis loved Harbaugh and even told him, you're going to be a great head coach one day and all that type of stuff. He's got a connection to the Raiders, all right? There's no there's no doubt about it that there's some synergy there. But it's a ch- kind of a train wreck of a roster. You know, same divisional issue, same AFC type of stuff. How much money does Davis really have after the fact? I know Blank's got money. Atlanta's a football mad market. Georgia is a football rabid place. Like I said, and to me, it's like the roster and the winnability of the division. Like, seriously, you go to Atlanta, you can win a division, you can whatever. Boom, next thing you know, you're in the NFC Conference Championship game in your first year, right? And they have the players to do it. Anybody that watched Atlanta Falcon football this year knows they have a lot of talent. Their quarterback play was terrible. And not to throw Desmond Ritter under the bus, but the kid was in over his head, and, you know, he turned the ball over all the time. Arthur Smith was a terrible head coach. That's called out for what it is. I don't want to, it's not mean-spirited and personal, but his play calling sucked. His philosophy sucked, right? He held back. It's like you had secretariat and you slowed him down, bro. You had a bunch of studs on that team. Let him run. Let him play. Harbaugh can figure that out. This is more great. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's got a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. San Francisco minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7 to 1. What the hell's the difference between the 6 and the 7 seed? I need my guys healthier to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> A lot of fun to do because you could kind of, you know, place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out. I've always found that interesting. But uh, New York is one state where it's a little bit unclear. You cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote. So you're talking about an MVP award, uh, a Cy Young, a Rookie of the Year, anything where somebody, where people at the end of the year have to vote. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
The Twisted Tuesday continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Moranci, Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Network. Shout out to all of our television affiliates. Let's get busy. Rick Saratella steps up and in. Founder of the NFL Draft Bible, allaccessfootball.com. Advanced scout for the Edmonton Elks and more. Rick, it's always a pleasure, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Buckle up. So, listen, there's a lot of stuff to unpack. You and I have spent a lot of time over the years talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. And um, this thing got grounded quickly from 9-1 and one to a complete disaster. You know, just a, an absolutely pathetic effort on Monday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's no shame in losing in life, right? It's like Vince Lombardi said. There's no shame in, in getting knocked down. The only shame is if you stay down. The Philadelphia Eagles got knocked down, bro, and they stayed down. Like, they didn't block. They didn't tackle. They looked like a football team. Didn't care, Rick. You know, what What a fall from grace, right? This was a team that was in the Super Bowl just a year ago. At this time, Nick Sariani, the tears coming down his face. And they were 10-1 and one at one point this season, right? They were riding. They were thriving. They were gliding. It looked all good. Uh, they looked like the team to beat during the first half of the season. And then, you know, injuries took a toll. I thought it was very telling. I'll tell you what, when A.J. Brown had already cleared out his locker and deleted everything Philadelphia because he was out this game, it's like, bro, you know, we still have the playoffs. If you win in advance, you know, you might have a game to play. <laughs> it's almost like he should people – listen, I bet on Tampa, fortunately, but A.J. Brown was kind of letting us know, yeah, we ain't winning this game, bro. It's over. <laughs> I, I, I think I think he saw the writing on the wall. I think he I think he is kind of what the attitude inside the locker room is, which what you're hearing is Sirianni's a disaster. He has no grip on the team. He has no grip on the staff. You see now Jason Kelsey has announced his retirement. I think you might see Lane Johnson follow suit. Brandon Graham, Sayonara, Fletcher Cox, you're done. I mean, there's going to be – I think Sirianni survives this thing, but I think that he is the ultimate CEO head coach. His two top lieutenants, we talked about the coaching continuity, took off. You saw the job that Steichen did and Gannon did. And he's missing those guys, and he did not do a great job replacing them. And, oh, by the way, Vic Fangio was on line one. He was no longer available, so I think he was missing all those elements. And he didn't get the job done. And I'll tell you what, the criticism is deserved. Uh, You saw the the, the defeated look in the press box, Jeffrey Lurie and, and Howie Roseman and on down. Rick Saratella uh, kicking it uh, with us. And as you stated to me, that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest things. And football players, they're not dumb in the room. They know what's going on uh, with the coaching staff and the Matt Patricia stuff. So, you know, you you throw the defensive coordinator under the bus. You brought it up a couple of weeks ago to me when you said Brian Johnson's not the offensive coordinator, right? He's standing there. He's getting blamed for everything. What? How much power does he really have? Not to mention, he shouldn't have been hired in the first place. He's from Houston. He knew the Hurts family. Jalen Hurts shouldn't have that type of power. That And he's not good enough just to hire a buddy, someone coming from Utah, from an offense. And I like Brian Johnson. I followed his career because I saw him in high school in Texas. I actually did one of his games, crazily enough, of all people uh, in Katy, Texas. So I followed his entire career, and it's amazing what he's accomplished. But it was too big of a jump, bro, to go from you, – you can't go from the Utah Utes OC to an NFL OC. It doesn't work that way. I thought it was too much of a jump. What about Jalen Hurts, uh, Rick? There, Listen, he got paid a lot of money, right, like like a five-star elite uh, quarterback. I think – I don't think that – I don't think that he's a lost cause moving forward, but they better get some people in there that can help him because by himself he can't do this. Like he, like Shane Steichen helped him succeed. It's pretty clear that Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni could not help Jalen Hurts succeed. I, I believe the problem is that the offense is not structured around any kind of pocket decision making. It's almost like they've designed an offense to be broken down. If not, you know the tush push. Yeah. Here we come. Let's you, roll. you roll out and throw deep, eh? You just roll it out. And, yeah. <laughs> 
you know, throw There's no it up. identity to their offense. And Jalen didn't run. Dude, one rush attempt. Rick, one rush attempt for Jalen Hurts in a playoff game, bro. That's pathetic. Well, I think it's telling how much that ankle is hurting him. I think it's telling, you know, it's all fine and dandy when you're winning, right? But when 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 you're losing and the second half and down the stretch, you saw the kinks in the armor. You saw Dallas uh, uh, Goddard go after him. You've seen A.J. Brown go after him on the sidelines, Jalen Hurts, that is. And you see, you've seen the frustration uh, continue to mount here. And, and I think some heads have to roll. Somebody has to pay the price here. It's not going to be the same staff. And I'll tell you, this roster is really going to be turned over big time. To your point, I'm not sure A.J. Brown is back. Devonta Smith was hurt down the stretch. They still haven't been able to find a slot-wide receiver. So, yes, they sorely lack the playmakers that, you know, you see some of these other teams, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, the fa- the faceless uh no name identity playmakers that they've drafted. Uh, Philadelphia has none. So, uh, Rick, on the other side of the field last night was Baker Mayfield. I don't know what it is about Baker Mayfield. People love to kick him when he was down, but they really don't want to ever give him any accolades when he succeeds. And he succeeded a lot in his career. It's not easy to win a Heisman Trophy. The guy led the Cleveland Browns to the playoffs and won a freaking game. Lost 22-17 to the Chiefs the following week. Like, gave Mahomes all he could handle. Just led the Bucks to the playoffs. Just beats the Eagles. And you're, well, you know, a lot of the division suck. The Eagles. Every, you know, just, just say, you know what? I was wrong. The guy's had a hell of a year. And he's been through a hell of a lot. Good for him. And I can't help but think, Rick, as somebody that grew up, like watching football in the 70s even, of the Lions and the Bucks playing each other because they were just like complete disasters. Right? Like, like I remember when the Bucks were like the worst team in the league and like, you know, like bad, bad, like 0-14 and, and all that type of stuff. And it's just funny. Here you have two franchises playing each other. It's, it's unbelievable. Who would have thought between the Detroit Lions and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one of them's going to the NFC Conference Championship game. Two, two franchises with stopgap quarterbacks, right? Ah, you know, we'll take golf as a throw-in. We'll see, you know, he could be the bridge. We'll find a guy. Baker Mayfield, ah, you know, let's sign him for a season. You know, here we are. I heard they $4 might million be dollars only, bro. $4 million they got yeah. him for. And how about Baker Mayfield? I think, I think you deserve a lot of credit all the way around from Baker Mayfield eating some humble pie. For Jason, like the uh, GM, having kind of that leeway, winning that Super Bowl, and having that freedom to roll the dice with a Baker Mayfield. And now here he was with the head coach nobody wanted, a quarterback nobody wanted, one <laughs> game away. They're rolling, baby. They're rolling. And, uh, you know, Two Tampa games Bay won the you- Super Bowl. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, whether you like it or not, Tampa Bay, that is your head coach and quarterback going into next season, but I uh, credit to J- Jared Goff and Baker Mayfield. You could state a case if he wins this ball game is a franchise quarterback. So the money, the number opened up at five and the money just keeps coming in on the Detroit, uh, Detroit Lions in this football game. So mm-hmm. the Lions are uh, right now laying six and a half points, Rick, who do you like in that game? Tampa at Detroit Sunday, three o'clock Eastern. You know, I actually do think these are two of the worst teams still remaining in the dance, but I have a lot of confidence in Detroit in this matchup. I actually, outside of Baltimore, I would say in the NFC, I have more confidence in the Detroit Lions than any team uh, coming up this weekend. And I do, I do, and I will say this I do believe the Green Bay San Francisco game is the true NFC championship. So what do you think about um so you think the winner of the Packers and the Niners would beat the Lions after if the I do. Lions win. Now listen, I do. Green Bay Packers talking about great stories. Jordan Love, just unbelievable performance. His leadership, his humbleness, just he's a perfect fit. And I think it was pretty telling when LaFleur was asked, what's the difference about this team and past teams, i.e. Aaron Rodgers teams? And all you need to know is he goes, 
you know, he goes, this year I've never had so much fun driving into the facility and coming to work and working with the players. <laughs> he said, he goes, yeah. we're just all on the same page. He goes, there's no, and I, well, I'm not, you know, no, I'm not taking notes. Just, I'm just saying, you know, there's every, we're all on the same page. Bunch of young guys that just sort of, we're in this together and forget about the outside no, noise. Great performance there. And I think they can play with San Francisco because Green Bay's playing with house money, and I respect Matt LaFleur to have a game plan ready here. San Francisco oh, yeah. are great, but I'm always hesitant when these teams haven't played in their real football in a couple of weeks. Rick, what's your thoughts on this football game? Well, I think this is going to be a very close matchup. In fact, you know, Green Bay at 10-1 to 1 in the NFC is uh, looking great because if they win this game, I think they could very well march right into the Super Bowl. They have a physical ground attack. They have these, uh, as you mentioned, they're playing with house money, these Bo Meltons of the world, the Romeo Dubes, the Christian Watsons, the the, the Musgraves, uh, uh, the guys that, that the Packers found, right? They thought, you know, Jayden hey. Reed. Jay Reed. Jay Reed. They got rid of Devontae Adams, and all they did was draft – Playmaker after playmaker. They found Bo Milton on the free agent uh, 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 pile. And I'll tell you what, they won the Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers trade, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. San Francisco minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7 to 1. What the hell's the difference between the 6 and the 7 seed? I need my guys healthier to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> A lot of fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh, a cy young a rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. The 
the Twisted Tuesday continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Let's do this thing. We're kicking it with Rick Saratella uh, right now. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. We're talking about the NFL playoffs, but I want to get into the NFL draft uh, coming up. But speaking of the draft, C.J. Stroud um, obviously was part of it uh, last year. Could not have had a better rookie season and just, you know, dialed it up a notch. I mean, just ice in his veins. So calm and so... You know what I mean? He's just, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. He's just so calm all the time. And I think it's his personality off the field as well. He's a pretty soft-spoken, calm. He's not like a rah-rah type of quarterback. I saw a fascinating interview with him, Rick, actually, before the game. And um, it was interesting, like, how honest he was when he said, you know what I mean? Like, earlier this year, there'd be times when I was wondering if I should be here. Right? Am I good enough? Like, should I still be in college? Can I lead these guys? He goes, I walked into the room, and it was like, damn, man, there are a bunch of men in here. And, like, I'm kind of a kid. Like, you know what I mean? And he goes, I got dreadlocks. And, like, he was talking honestly about how people, like, always just sort of looked at him differently and not looked at him as a leader and all this. And everybody on the Texans said he's just so genuine. Like, he's not a fake person, and he doesn't try to be something that he's not. And they just gravitate towards them. And, oh, yeah, by the way, they see him make plays on the field, Rick. <laughs> I yeah, like what well, they said too. last thing, Rick. They said, we don't call anything like he's a rookie. Like, we call an offense like it's a veteran call. Like, there's no, there's no training wheels on the offense, Rick. Like, you know what I mean? And they don't have a ton of stars either on offense to throw to either. Well, again, you know, they found guys like Nico Collins, I think, in the third or fourth round. Uh, guys, you know, like Tank Dell, who's now injured, but it was another third or fourth round pick. Uh, so they, they've worked, you know, the free agency well. They've worked the draft. But how about Will Anderson? He's not too bad either. But to your point about Stroud, that's why I liked the Texans. To your point, the great uh, pocket poise, but also the decision making. We saw the difference between him and Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco throws interceptions. Joe Flacco takes too many risks. C.J. Stroud, not so much. Very smart decision maker, does not turn the ball over. I think Baltimore will control this game because they are happy to be there. You see Demeco Ryan smiling. You see C.J. Stroud kind of happy to be there a little bit where Lamar Jackson has a huge chip on his shoulder. I think there's a lot of motivation there. The Ravens are on a mission I think the Texans might backdoor it, but I think the Ravens take control of this thing, lead it the whole way. Maybe the Texans make it close at the end, but I do like the Ravens to uh, take this matchup. You know, it's we always remember what we saw last. We see these teams play well, but and I said I'm cautious about these teams that have been off for a couple of weeks and or they haven't played meaningful games in a couple of months because they were so dominant and they clinched things so early. But history tells us that the teams, like, it's one, it's cute to win in a wild card weekend. You know, let's just be real. It's going to be a hell of a lot more challenging to go into Baltimore than it was to beat Joe Flacco and the Browns uh, last week in Houston on a, on a perfect track. I get the feeling that Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson are on a collision course, right? So, which leads me to the Bills and the Chiefs. Again, the rematch. Man, I mean, they played so often, and it's crazy. So that's like their sixth time in the last three years type of deal with the playoffs in the regular season. But this time it's in Buffalo. Patrick Mahomes has never played a road playoff game uh, before. Buffalo were beat up, Rick. They got good news. Rasul Douglas will play. Uh, they're going to need him um, in that secondary against the Chiefs. Bills are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Who do you like in that game? Man, this is such a tough matchup because, you know, to your point, the Bills have been kind of uh, backs against the wall. They haven't had any weeks off. There was no kind of, hey, take take the foot off the gas. It's been all pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes. And I think now they're rolling at the right time. They do have that home field advantage. Uh, You saw they are able to make those big plays. Shakir, we talked about him at the beginning of the season coming through. Uh, I'll bite my tongue on on, on the tight end. Uh, Kincaid is a, is a great weapon. Him and Knox, you talk about that tandem. Uh, and, and so Buffalo, I like them on paper, but it's like, you know what? 
the Chiefs, they are the champs until they ain't. They do have this That's kind of Michael. That's what I told you like two months ago, and you were like, oh, they suck. And now I like how you reverse. I told you. I said the Chiefs aren't great, well, Rick, but I don't want to have to play them in a 16-minute game in the playoffs. But you know, now you know, it's on the you road. Know, and the this Dolphins is what I feel suck. Like, this, this is what I feel like about the Chiefs, okay? I'll give you this analogy. Michael Jordan, right, back in the in the heyday, like if you if you sneezed on MJ, it was a foul, right? Like MJ could travel, like he could carry the ball from midcourt to the basket, and he wouldn't get carried, he wouldn't get called for traveling. And I just feel like I've seen the Chiefs get blessed so many times in the playoffs and big games. So they have it's almost like the Bills have to really play their A plus plus game because I feel like they even have to overcome the referees. And I hate to say that, but based on what I've seen, it's like that's the X factor with the Chiefs when you play them. They're the champs. It's the playoffs. But I do like the Bills. Circle the wagons. I almost pulled out my Bills hoodie for you. But I'll save that for <laughs> next week because we'll be talking about the Bills again. Buckle up. Buffalo. Buffalo Bills. State yeah. of New York's football team. The only football team uh, in, yeah. in, in the state of New York. All right, listen, there's a lot of stuff I want to get to uh, still here. Uh, my guy, J.J. McCarthy. I swear, mm. man, this guy is going to be so polarizing going into the draft and I almost feel like um, people are criticizing my 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 child or something like that, Rick. You know what I mean? When I read, oh, he's terrible. I read these things. I'm just like, I sort of. But it's fascinating to me. And I, I was, you know, I've been reading a lot about him and NFL this draft that and stuff. And so so polarizing. Uh, like the Bleacher Report, a good example. There was an article the other day about J.J. McCarthy, and it was in the Michigan, like Detroit Free Press and whatnot, and they sort of took little clips of all different draft, you know what I mean, talk. about. And they said, mm-hmm. what do people think about J.J. McCarthy? And there were more than a few that compared him to Zach Wilson, which I thought was, like, very, like, off and not a good even physical comparison. And and others were comparing him to Andrew Luck, right? I mean, I saw one, people were like, oh, he's, he's going to be a bust. Others are like, he's the man. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But one thing is, as well as you know, people that write for the Bleacher Report aren't general managers. So they're not the ones that are going to be making the decisions uh, in the end. But he is a polarizing quarterback with the public. I think he's less polarizing with coaches and GMs. And you know this stuff better than I do. But I heard, basically, he liked what he heard in the advisory book in which they're very honest about his projection. And that's why he came out, because he liked what he saw from this. I think he's going 11th or 12th, Rick. What do you think? Oh, I do believe he's a top 10 to 15 overall talent. And I'd love to know the the detractors. I mean, what what is it they see that they don't like in the game, you know? Uh, I, I'd love to know. I'm curious. I read something about he doesn't process defenses with his reads. I'm like, how do you like? And you know, I was like, how do you know this? What are you talking about? He does lock in. He's very directional. I get it. I thought. What do you think about this? Brady Quinn said this the other day about JJ McCarthy. He said JJ McCarthy was actually in a tougher spot than all these other quarterbacks because he didn't throw much. So when he had to throw, it's tough. He goes, it's easier when you're dropping back when you're a quarterback and you're just throwing 45, 50 times a game, right? Jay, every throw J.J. made, there was like a championship on the line, Rick. It's like, all right, third and seven, you got to get it right in here, bro, right? Like, I think if J.J. is in a free-flowing offense, I don't see any problems with him reading defenses. Uh, that, that was the criticism, his lack of progressions and a lack of arc on the football. Well, I mean, I think J.J. can make all the throws. He works the short to intermediate part of the field, which is what the NFL offenses are really predicated around. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah, right. So, like, what you need to do to be successful, he's not doing these uh, roll it to the left, off the back foot, 70 yards down field like Zach Wilson. No, he's doing it on a weekly basis uh, against Big Ten defenses, which, you know, you know, Penn State is a big boy defense. Ohio State is big time defense, you know. Uh, Matt Rule always plays uh, a hard nosed defense. Uh, same, same with PJ Fleck and Greg Schiano. I mean, the Big Ten has got some pretty tough defenses. Last time I checked, so I, I think he just had an undefeated season. 
Uh, he makes all the throws. Completed 72% of his passes, bro. You want accurate? He completed 72% of his passes, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. 15 and, and, they, and, and And he has what, what you call sneaky fast, right? Like, he, he moves the chains when, when he needs to. He really doesn't do it a lot. But when he needs to, he can, and he can throw on the run. I mean, I like J.J. McCarthy a lot. Uh, in fact, I, I actually like him probably more than Michael Penix and Bo Nix right now. And we talked about Cam Ward. We talked about him taking a East-West Shrine Bowl invitation, and he got some NIL money to come back. Uh, I, I don't remember offhand if it was uh, uh, Florida State or somebody gave him some big-time NIL money. So the draft process will be interesting. I, I still think, you know, Caleb Williams uh, it, it will be the first pick. I think Jaden uh, Daniels is in the mix. Drake May will be up there. And then I do believe it's J.J. McCarthy. And now you could have, like, I think six quarterbacks, including Bo Nix and Michael uh, Penix, in the first-round conversation. And I think McCarthy is in the top I half. agree with you. Yeah. I agree. And all it takes is one, right? It's all subjective. There's going to be a GM that likes Bo Nix. There's going to be someone that likes, you know, Penix the speed of Penix's football and the velocity and think, you know, they can throw with them. It's going to be fascinating to see how this all plays out. This has been like the wildest off season ever. And it's not even really started yet. It's just sort of starting. Mm -hmm. You have all these legendary NFL coaches and Harbaugh's interviewing and all kinds of crazy stuff. But let's talk about a guy that you know, well, and Jed fish, um, your high school, um, high school, not classmate, but uh, alumnus, went to the same high school as Jed Fish. So you've seen his coaching uh, ascension, and he's put the work in, right? He's been assistants, quarterback coaches, and, like, he's been around big-time programs, did an awesome job with Arizona, and now he gets a big-time uh, gig in the Big Ten with the Washington Huskies in their first year going into the Big Ten. Yeah, big time move, and you could state a case that Arizona was actually in a better position heading into next year. Like, I really thought Arizona was a top 10 program ready to ascend into the top five. So it'll be interesting to see how this impacts that transfer portal. But, you know, hey, money talks, and, you know, uh, he's a grinder, right? Still a relatively young guy. Uh, great mind, you know, I don't know him personally, but hey, shout out to Hanover Park High School, East Hanover, New Jersey. He is a Hornet, and, uh, you know, I, I do root for that man. <laughs> That's what you guys are, you're the Hornets, huh? <laughs> you're the Hornets, City, man, baby. Out for that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> singing. We're like Muhammad Ali floating around, baby, singing like a beat. <laughs> yeah, Li Livingston, New Jersey, he's from, uh, 47 years old. As I said, if you look at his resume, guys, like he's been everywhere. Michigan, UCLA, Los Angeles Rams, New England Patriots. So he's been he's coached like with Harbaugh, McVay, and Belichick in the last like seven, eight years. Yet. If you're just wondering who this Jet Fish guy is, he's put the work in. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Pick. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. San Francisco minus 120 to win the NFC championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. What the hell's the difference between the 6 and the 7 seed? I need my guys healthy here to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> A lot of fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on 
basically anything that requires a vote. So you're talking about an MVP award, uh, a Cy Young, a Rookie of the Year, anything where somebody, where people at the end of the year have to vote. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, there's, so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Rancy. Shout out to our boy, Rick Saratella. There's been so much talk about the cold weather at these uh, football games and the weather. For the record, Kansas City and Buffalo this week, it won't be that bad, actually, by Buffalo standards. It's going to be like 25 degrees or something, you know, 15, 20 mile an hour winds. So it's it's generally just playoff football weather. But it was the fourth coldest uh, playoff game in NFL history on Saturday between the Chiefs and the Dolphins. And it was bad enough that um, Fox 4 in Kansas City reports that there were 70 calls. There were 70 emergencies in the stadium during the football game. That's a lot. Like, no, normally there's a couple of fights. Somebody will fall down the stairs. Like, there's a couple of incidences at every game. But 70. They had to respond to 70 different instances. It was serious enough that uh, 15 people needed to be taken to the hospital with hypothermia and three people had to be taken to the hospital with extreme frostbite. Now, I don't know. I don't know if, like, you know what I mean, like some of these jackasses that aren't wearing a shirt or a jacket or anything like that, and they want, you know, oh, that's funny and stuff. No, it isn't. Like, you know, like, <laughs> when it's that cold, bro, it isn't. You're going to end up, like, you can, like, do severe damage to your nerves. There's all kinds of weird things that can happen when you get into that, that type of temperature. And the thing is, too, people are drinking, so it seems like a good idea, right? Oh, you know, drink a couple of, you know, this, you know, something strong and warm type of deal. Everyone's smuggling in or they're buying drinks or whatnot. And you're outside and you don't realize because you're all drunk and, you know what I mean, you don't realize, like, your blood temperature is not at a good spot. But this is, you know, it's pretty dangerous. At some point, too, and, you know, I'm pretty hardcore. I've been in, like, really cold weather games over the years and stuff, and, I don't mind like a snowstorm game, right? But when you're you're talking minus thirty and stuff like that, is it really is it really worth it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you willing to get hypothermia and go to the hospital for your football team? Uh, I'm willing to bet a lot of money on my team. I'm not getting hypothermia for them. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.